I want to say something about the betrothal process. The betrothal process in the Jewish custom was as, as, as the, the strength of it was the same as having the marriage ceremony. Uh -huh. Amen. Once you were a young lady betrothed to a Jewish man, you know, it was basically over with except for the ceremony and uh, that time at night when the, when the procession uh, started at the mother and father's house of the bride. And they wanted it to be at night because it was a beautiful thing, amen, for the people to watch. And they would start a procession from her house. She would come out beautifully dressed and adorned. And her maidens with her and her family members. And they would have candles and torches. And they would come through the streets of whatever city, town, or community. And uh, at certain uh, uh, songs were sung, music was playing. The regular people had a chance to dance as they come along. And you saw this beautiful procession coming down through town. And it finally got to the groom's place or the place where they were to stay, where the family tent with this new couple was to stay in the family house. And the groom come outside and they were put together. And I don't know what they said in Jewish ceremony, but I'm certain there were some words exchanged. And finally they were pronounced man and wife publicly. Uh -huh. And then they went right on into the house, and the rest of the people disappeared and went to their place. So you see, the strength of the patrol, though, was like actually the ceremony of getting married. Amen. And the actual marriage procession coming through the street was simply bringing those two together so that they could be together in marital bliss and all the rest of their life as Amen. husband and wife. Clap your hand and give God praise. And when one comes to the Lord, we're going to get back to Mary. But yeah. when one comes to the Lord, uh, beautiful things takes place when a yes. sinner, when a person who lived separate from the Lord, and I know the word and title we use for such a person is a sinner. And I don't mean everybody was, was an absolute uh, 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 terrible person. Uh -huh. But you were, just, you, you were just unsaved. You just did not have a relationship with Christ. You operated from the standpoint of your sinful nature, and you did what sinful people do. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when you decide to accept Christ as your Savior, yes. because I'm going to tell you now, he's not lost. I hear people say, and Jesus, and one day Jesus found me. Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, I, 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 I won't argue with you, but I'll say this. When I was seeking the Lord, amen, it was me that was doing the seeking. Of course, He's coming to you. He's always available. He's there, but he wants you to seek him. Amen. Just as we as young people seek each other, boys like girls, they start talking to them. Girls like boys, they make themselves available so the boys can talk to them. Amen. That's what one needs to do when they want to come to Christ. Amen. You must approach the Lord and begin to talk to him because he won't know the intentions of your mind and heart except you open your mouth and verbalize them. Yes. Amen. I know people say, well, God knows everything. He knows your silent thoughts. He knows your thoughts before you think them. You're right. But with God, he wants you to open your mouth and right. speak to him in verbal terms. Amen. Yes. Because when he went to the, when he went to the, I'm coming back to Mary, but when he went to the temple and found that man there that was 38 years long in a, a, a terrible physical condition. Yes. Amen. Crippled and couldn't move. And amen. His muscles had atrophied and he, he couldn't, he could only do, only thing he could do was crawl and, 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 and maybe do a little roll and real fast. And God put some power and some, some of his grace and his blessing in a pool called Bethesda. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and God caused this place to become like a hospital for all of the, many of the sick people uh, in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And so it was all, and Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda was located inside one of the gates to the city. So the people knew which, the sick people knew which gate to go to. And they knew what place to gather around that pool called Bethesda. Amen. And God had placed a man there 38 years. Amen. Blind, halt, uh, 
mean, uh, 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 his muscles and muscular activity. He wasn't blind, but he was withered and couldn't move and couldn't um, walk like other men. They had been there 30 years and 38 years. And God would touch the water. The water would start moving and somebody would get in. Amen. And every time, uh, I guess the other people, being more mobile, they were able to get in before this man and receive the healing that they wanted. And so he was frustrated. Amen. Uh, he was frustrated like, uh, just a, like, uh, like Mary was a little bit frustrated. He was, amen, uh, probably angry at himself because he couldn't go fast enough. Mary was just confused. She was frustrated. And she was, amen, kind of dumbfounded at what was said to her by the angel. And she asked a few questions and the angel gave her answers. And then she said, be it unto me just as God has ordained. Amen. Then Jesus one day came upon this man in the pool of Bethesda, at the pool of Bethesda. Amen. And he walks up to him and asks him something that the rest of us, if we are not thinking spiritual, we would say, why did he do that? Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made whole? Amen. Ah, and the rest of us, when we read the story, we said, well, of course the man wanted to be made whole. Why is Jesus asking him such an obvious question? Amen. Amen. You know what? In the word of God, it says when we pray to the Lord, it says when you pray to the Lord, put in your petition before God. It's the, the word of God said that we should ask Jesus. Talk when you pray. You are to ask God in my name for your petition. Amen. So you can see it is the will of God for us to pray, but he wants us not always to pray silently. He wants us, and you don't have to yell and scream, but he wants you to open your mouth and verbalize your request to him. And he said, if you do it in faith, believe in that he's able, amen, to answer your prayers. He said, you shall you shall receive, you shall ask what you will, and if you do it in faith, you shall receive what you ask. Amen. How many believe that you can ask something from God and receive it? Amen. amen yes. And so, amen, Jesus asked do you want to be made whole? And the man said, amen, he didn't answer that question directly. He said, amen, he gave Jesus the long story. He said, uh, he said, he said, sir, he didn't know who he was. He said, sir, every time the water is moved by God, we all see it start to move. And we all start making our mad dash. To, and, and the blessing of it was, and, 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 and amen, and some people would call it not a blessing. <laughs> but there was something about that moving of the water that it was available only to the first one that got in first. Amen. Uh -huh. So everybody else come away disappointed. Everybody else come away, amen, sad. Everybody else start jockeying for a new position. So when the water moved the next time, they'd be closer to the pool. And so Jesus listened to his story. And Jesus said, listen, yes, mm -hmm. amen, every time I get ready to go in, somebody go down before me, Jesus, yes. He said, and, and, and that's why I'm the way I am now. And Jesus said, or, or, or Jesus basically said, are you done? He said, yes. He said, now, Jesus, now listen to me. He said, now, and this is strange. This is strange. This man had been in the condition he'd been in 38 years. Amen. Right. Never had walked in his entire life. Amen. Always crawling and, and, and scooting along on his hands and knees. Amen. Dragging himself with his arm. Jesus said to him, listen to me and listen carefully. He said to him, rise Take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. Somebody would have said, utter foolishness. Hallelujah. How can a man who has never walked, amen, get up and roll up his bed, put it on his shoulder, and start walking away from the place he's been for 38 years? Yes. Amen. I'll tell you how by the power of God. All Keep right, your hand all right, all right. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. Did not the word of God say to us a few minutes ago? Uh -huh. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Uh -huh. I want to stop by to tell you if you didn't know it already. Jesus was, amen, the personification of God in flesh. The Hebrews says that he was, amen, the very image of God in flesh. Amen. Uh -huh. And that don't mean take a picture of God. <laughs> Stick it in the 
inside of the man Jesus. <clears throat> and that's what you got. Know what it meant was. Amen. God just took her. Amen. Uh, how shall I best put this? Uh, women know how. A lot of people know how to bake. And if you want a cake, amen, to taste like lemon, uh, you don't have to put the whole lemon in the cake. If you want a uh, cake to taste like <coughs> vanilla, you don't have to take the vanilla bean uh, and put it in the cake. Amen. All you have to do is reach and get the vanilla flavoring bottle and take a teaspoon on the cap of the bottle, pour a little bit of the vanilla, open the lemon juice, pour a little bit of the lemon juice into a container, amen, drop it into the cake batter, and you got lemon cake or vanilla cake. Take some good stuff, Sister Raquel, calm chocolate, amen, melt it down, pour it into the cake. You got chocolate cake, amen. You didn't put, amen, the, the, the place where the chocolate come from. You didn't take that tree or that bush or wherever the bee or wherever chocolate come from. You just took the essence of the chocolate and put it in. So it was God that was talking to this man. And guess what? Like Mary, he said, okay, Lord, if you said it, I got to do it, amen. And so he mustered all of his strength. Amen. He pushed away from the earth and tried to get up. And when he did, Jesus said, arm muscle, get stronger. Leg muscle. Amen. Support the man. Amen. Waste and the rest of it. Get strength. And he stood up, rolled up his bed. And glory to God. And put it on his shoulder. And began to walk. Amen. Mary said, Lord, ah, glory, glory. I'm willing to serve. Amen. Lord, I'm willing to serve. I'm willing also to suffer. Amen. Like this man at the pool of Bethesda. Oh, glory. Both of them, Mary and the man at the pool, had practiced before believing in God. This was not a new thing. They had already practiced believing in God. They had already practiced saying yes to the will of God. Amen. They had already said, if God asks me to do something, I'm going to consider it carefully. I'm going to ask all of my questions. And when I get my answers, amen, I'm not arguing with God. I'm not going to fuss with God. I'm not going to say, Lord, ah, glory, let me think about it. I got to pray about this. Amen. This stuff sounds funny. Amen. I don't know if I want to do it. But Mary said, amen. Angel, tell God that I'm his handmaid. Right. And whatever he wants me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm at your service. Ah, glory to God. She got pregnant. Amen. People, amen. Here come the rest of it. We talked about service. She was willing and ready to serve. Ah, glory to God. And I want to slow down because I want to share some things with you. Mary was not eager. To what her choice was going to cost her. All right. She was not. Amen. In Israel, unlike today, yes. when young men and women get sexually active early, and uh, the young lady come up pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, family members and community and folks in our world today have a way of kind of explaining it away. You know, kind of, you know, everybody does it so. It was just an accident, they'll say. Yeah, it, was, it was accidental. Amen. I ain't gonna ask y'all to raise y'all hand who think such behavior is accidental. Because most of us that's got any kind of sense of our science know that when a male and a female of any species get together, huh? Don't have to say a word? and both of their bodies is working, something will happen. So accident? Really? Amen. Really? So come off that stuff about accident. Mary was not a fool. She knew that the people of Israel, they dog women enough. If you were barren, whoo, they, oh man, they wrote you. Girl, what's wrong with you? You must be cursed by God. Can't have no babies, you poor thing, you. 
Get away from me. I don't want to catch your disease. Women that was barren was almost like, like women that were pregnant. Both of them was shunned. I don't know why. Because that barren woman didn't do a thing. Didn't do a thing. But Elizabeth, she had a burden to bear. Until God made her pregnant. You know what she did when she got pregnant? She didn't rush out and tell her friend, Oh, child, check me out. 